Okay, in this lab we're going to investigate Hooke's Law and then simple harmonic motion with the mass on a spring. So the first part, we're going to look at Hooke's Law with a rubber band to see if a rubber band obeys Hooke's Law. So I'm going to start with a 50 gram mass hanger hanging here and I'm just going to record the position and then keep adding masses and keep recording the positions. So you put those numbers in your data table. Now notice it says total suspended weight. Weight, of course, is the mass times g. We're not actually going to multiply by g. We'll save that for the end when we do the data analysis. Okay, so for now, we're just going to record the masses in grams and then the position on the meter stick. And then we're going to plot that and see what the plot looks like. Okay, so starting with the 50 gram mass hanger, I'm going to get my stick and I want to measure from the bottom of the hanger. Just the position, and I've got 39.6 centimeters. Then I add 100, so I have a total of 150. And that's right again. And I've got 43.4. Add another 100. About 250. And I've got 49.7. Now I want a total of 350, so I take these two symbols off, add a 2 and a 1, and I've got 350. And I've got 56.123, 56 56.3. 56 Now I want 450, so I add out 100. And I've got 61.6. Then I want 550. So I take off a 1 and add a 2, so I've got a total of 550. And I've got 66.1. And another 100, so I have 2, 4, 5, 6, 50. And I've got 70.0. And then I'm going to add... Another 100, so I have a total of 750. So I'm going to put a 5 and a 2 plus a 50, so I got 750 now. And I've got 73.8. do the same thing with the spring. So I take off my rubber band. Now I'm going to use my spring. So 50 grams in the spring. Let's see if I can stabilize it a little bit. I've got 70.1 at 100.
And I've got 76.6. Another hundred, so I have total two fifty, and I've got eighty nine point five six eighty nine point eight. Okay, and I've got ninety nine point five. I want four fifty. I've got 109.4. Now I want 550. I've got 119.3. 119.3, and that's 129.0. That's one thirty nine point zero. Okay, now we've got all the data for the hook slot part. After I get all the data collected, I'll make another video with making the graphs and doing the data analysis. Okay, so next we're going to look at oscillations of the spring. Okay. So in that case, I need a stopwatch, and I've got a stopwatch, and we're going to start with 250 grams on our spring, so I've got a 200 plus 50 for the hanger, and I'm going to pull it down approximately 10 centimeters, the amplitude of the oscillations is not important because that does not affect the period. We're going to uh, keep increasing masses and then we're going to marry, measure the period of the oscillations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to reduce the effects of random error we're starting and stopping the stopwatch. We're going to time a total of 10 oscillations and then divide that total time by 10 to give the average time for one oscillation. Okay. So I'm going to put it down about 10 centimeters let it bounce a couple of times and set start timing. And the time I want to count a complete oscillation, which is a complete up and down motion. So go down about 10 centimeters. Okay, when it gets to the bottom, I'm going to start. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got 11.13 seconds. Now I'm going to add another 100. 
set a total of 350. Go down about 10 centimeters. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve point eight seven. I'm going to add another hundred. So I have a total of four fifty. So now I want a total of 550. So 2, 4, 5, and the hanger is 50. Start. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 15.59. Now I want a total of 650. So I have 2, 4, 5, 6, 50. That's it for the data collection for this one. All right. So I'm going to stop the video here. I'll do my calculations and I'll give you this data and I'll make another video showing how we make the graphs and find the spring constant. So we'll find the spring constant from Hooke's Law for this spring and then we'll find the spring constant from the period of the oscillations and then compare those two values and see how close we get measuring the spring constant two different ways. Okay?